Hello and welcome to Die Dice Tabletop. My name is Chris and today we're going back to 2003. Return of the King had just come out in the cinema, Tom Anderson had started his quest to become everybody's friend, and we were all destroying the family computers with LimeWire. Now in 2003, I was in my peak of my first phase of Warhammer collecting, and I still have a lot of those old models. And I've spent the better part of about 18 months cleaning all of these up and getting them ready just to start painting again and give them a bit of love and to paint them up in a way that I definitely wasn't able to do when I was a kid. So, what I thought I'd do is make a series out of it. I really want to get better as a painter. I'm stuck in quite a few um, just routine and ruts when it comes to just achieving the effect that I want. I've got my own method. I really need to start branching out, get a bit better at wet blending, edge highlighting, uh, and I also don't want any of these models to go to waste. So, take a look at what you see here. Let me know what you'd like to see painted coming up. I've got an Araman, there's another Avalon despoiler there. There's quite a few models within this. There's Chaos Terminators, Raptors, uh, there's a Grey Knight Terminator there. We've also got I think there's a Black Templar squad of five on the right hand side. But for this video, I'm going to choose the Beastman Lord. I loved this model as a kid, and I want to have a go at the paint scheme that I loved as a kid as well. But just before we get into that, I collected when I was younger the Diagostini Lord of the Rings magazines. These came out, I think it was every two weeks, and you got a metal figure with them, some maybe Rohirrim, some Gondor. I've got the set. I'm going to go through these, make another series as well going through all of these Lord of the Rings magazines and painting these up. I've got so much models from when I was a kid, I really need to start getting through them. I think it's going to be a good opportunity as well for you guys to potentially see some models that you might not have seen before. Uh, there's a lot of fresh faces uh, in Warhammer now since when I got into it. So again, take a look at all of these models, let me know which one you'd like me to start off with, and hopefully we're going to get through all of the Diagostini Lord of the Rings magazines. Okay, it is time to start on the Beastman Lord. A great thing with these old metal models, the way that the bases were designed is that the model just pushed straight into place, and there's normally enough friction that you didn't have to glue it, so it would just hold in place while you were painting it. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is to glue these axes on, and I remember from a kid that this was absolute hell. These don't stay in place whatsoever, and I'm going to knock them off a few times throughout this. If you've been fortunate enough that you got into Warhammer after these metal models, believe me, Everyone remembers how much of a pain in the arse it was to get these things to stick together. But after about 20 minutes of nearly losing my fingers, got them both stuck on. Next thing we need to do now is to move on and prime the miniature. I'm going to use my airbrush for this. I use a 70-30 mix of surface primer to thinner, put that in the cup and give it a good mix around with my paintbrush. And then it's just time to give the model a quick couple of coats. After giving that three light coats, time to set that down to dry. Alright, the paints that we're going to be using for this, so you can follow along should you wish to, are on the screen now. I will be telling you which ones I'm using as and when we go along. So feel free to channel your inner Bob Ross and have some happy little accidents with me. Now that the base coat is dry, the next thing to do is to put the first layer on. I'm going to be using oak brown for this. I'm going to be painting everything apart from what I want to leave black. So that's going to mainly be chain mail and the axes. Now I'm following along with that picture that I showed you earlier, there's no guide so I'm just taking a look at what I see and trying to interpret it the best that I can. I reckon this is going to be a good starting point, uh, there's going to be a lot of brown all over this model so I'm going to need to differentiate that to get the different tones as we go along. So to help break that brown up, the first thing that we're going to do is put a dry brush of sea grey into the fur and the hair on the model. This will help differentiate the fur from the skin tone because we're both working from the same oak brown starting off with. So this will help create a dark colour in the fur. And to help with that we're going to now apply a shade of Nuln Oil all over where we've just dry brushed. Making sure to get that into all of the recesses, just like so. Now that it's dried you can see it's separated the tone nicely from the skin and has softened that grey highlight ready for when we come back and highlight the fur later on. Next is to paint the leather. These are the braces and there's also an under part of his shoulder cloth that we're going to paint a darker brown. So for this we're just going to grab some Abaddon Black and we're going to add it to the oak brown that we were already using earlier. Mix those two in about a 50-50 mix just so we've got a darker shade of brown and go around and apply that all over the leather sections. We 
With the base layer on the leather complete, the next is to put the base layer onto the tunic. For this I'm going to be using Barbarian Flesh. I'm going to be putting that onto the wet palette, getting it a nice thin consistency. Probably going to put two layers on this. And that's just a simple matter now of going over the tabard, up and around how this connects onto the hood and shoulder pieces. And there we have our base layer of Barbarian Flesh ready to work from. Over that is going to go a sepia shade wash, just putting that onto the wet palette. I'm going to be working with two layers of this, nice and thin, to help that really build up and get nice and deep and dark in the recesses. This is going to help guide me then as I come to highlight the fabric later on, where to put the high and low points. And there we have it. Right, with that dried, the next step now is to go back to the Barbarian Flesh. We want to water this down. That'll help thin the paint out. We're going to build this now back up in layers over the wash, just so it's going to blend in nicely with the tone that we've got underneath and doesn't create any too stark contrasts. So everywhere that the wash didn't recess, I went over those areas and then came back in for a second layer just to help build up that Barbarian Flesh again. You can see now the start of the tonal range that we're going to be getting throughout this fabric as we get brighter. On top of this, we're now going to be putting a bone white. I'm going to be thinning this down a bit, and in a stippling motion, I don't want to go over everywhere that the bone white has been. This is creating a highlight, so we want that gradual transition from the dark to the light colour. So gently stippling over where all the light is going to naturally be hitting the model, and trying to leave as much in the recesses as I can, to really just trying to capture now more of the high points that are on this tunic. Once that's dried, we can start to see now the difference of how the fabric is moving up through the light range. Apologies for the lighting over the next few minutes, it uh, all fell apart while filming. So the tunic on this model is a shade brighter, so I'm going to add some white to the bone white already, give that about a 50-50 mix, and then go over in the same motion before, use that stippling technique to add a highlight over to all the very top areas where the light is going to hit, as well as all of the outside. You can see there, I'm trying not to go back over too much the previous work that I've done is only on the really outside and the very tippy tops of all those areas that we're going to be hitting with this bone white. And with that done, as we can see, the tone is now moving nicely up from the shadows onto the highlights. Next, we're going to be applying a base layer to all of the studs on the tunic using Lead Belcher. This was a bit of a slow, long process. It was just a matter of being patient, taking my time, making sure to not spill any of the Lead Belcher off onto the nice tunic that I've just been painting. But thankfully, there were no accidents, and that's now complete. While I've got some lead belcher onto the palette, the next thing to do was to go over all the chainmail. Using a flat brush and making sure not to have too much paint on it, this was just a matter of gently brushing this all over the chainmail just to pick out all the very tops of it, not pressing too hard so I've got splotches in the recess. And there we are, that's looking good. All right, the lighting's getting better finally. Next thing to do now is to go around all of those studs. We're going to use the sepia shade again. That was the one that we used on the tunic in the first instance. Just going around each individual stud just to help create a real shadow on it and to differentiate it from the tunic itself. This again was a slow process, but it was all worth it. Once it was done, it really helped create the difference and make those studs pop. Tunic complete, I now grab some leather brown and barbarian flesh and mix these together in a 50-50 consistency and apply that to my dry brush. This is going to be used now to start building up the highlight on the fur and the hair of the model. So as before, I just went over and applied a dry brush to everything. Now no matter what anybody tells you, your hand is the best dry brushing palette, so make sure to always use that every time you're dry brushing. After that, I make the same 50-50 mix on the wet palette, taking a very thin Tamiya brush, I then load the brush up and gently stroke this all over the fur just to really pick out and define all those individual strands that have been moulded. By doing it this way you get the dusty effect of the dry brush, that's going to help create the texture of fur, then coming back over it with the brush we're going to really pick up all of those edges and get those nice crisp highlights that make our model pop. With the highlight complete we can now see how that's really starting to differentiate the fur from the rest of the body. And speaking of the body, we're going to be starting off with some Beastie Brown. We're going to be using this now for the skin tone. So getting that on the wet palette and just thinly applying it to my brush. We don't need much here. We're just going to be stippling on all the raised areas of the skin. So there's like a forearm bulge there leading into the bicep. We're also going to be going underneath the eyes, on the mouth, the backs of the legs as well. Anywhere that the skin is exposed on this model. Making sure to just avoid all of the recesses so that we get that gradual skin tone starting to build up. After letting that dry, I then mixed in some leather brown with the beastie brown. This helped gave the next layer up in the tonal transition I'm looking for on the skin. 
So making sure not to cover too much of the beastie brown that I put on previously, I went around all the raised areas of the flesh and applied this highlight. Finally then, for the very last highlight layer, I mixed in some bone white with the previous Beastie Brown and Leather Brown mix that I was using for the previous skin tone. Went over all the very, very edges of just around the eyes, the edges of the mouth, on the backs of the heels, caught out all of the really raised areas that I wanted, and that was the final highlight complete. So there we have it, you can see that although we started with the same brown on the hair and the skin, we've now gone in two completely different directions with them, and they really help stand out from each other. Ooh. While I got some of the leather brown out, I then also blocked out the hoof colour. Next, we're going to be working on the horns, so we're going to need to go back and black these out, because they've got a lot of paint splashes on them from previous stuff that we've been doing. As well as painting the horns, anything else that I need to be black at this stage, I've also gone back and put a layer on that, so this is included as the axes as well. We're going to be building up the horns in two colours, so we're going to start off with a medium grey. This is going to give us like the predominant base colour of the horn. We'll then come back in with a lighter grey next and provide a second highlight on top of that. So with the medium sea grey and a very thin brush, what I just did was in sweeping motions, I tried to create as very thin lines as I could, top to bottom of the horn, making sure that they go all the way around. Here you can see we created the base in which we can now start building up our highlights on top of. And for this highlight, we're going to be using Army Painter's Spaceship Exterior, getting that on the wet palette, and using my Artist Opus brush here. I want thinner lines now than what I previously put on with the grey before. Um, this is a real test of my skill. Again, this is a series about learning. Um, so this is great for me to practice and build up these little lines, just to hopefully get that horn look that we're going for in the original picture that I'm trying to follow. That's the second highlight complete. It's by no means perfect, but I'm happy with it so far. This is all about learning, and I'm certainly doing that as we go along. Next, we need to highlight all of the dark brown leather that we painted early on. For that, I'm going back to the Beastie Brown. Using a nice small brush with a good pointed tip, I go around and edge highlight all of these pieces of the leather underneath the shoulders and on the braces as well. After that, using a small layer brush by Citadel, I got back into the Beastie Brown, wicked off a lot of it, and stippled all over the braces just to create that worn look. And I also got his little satchel bag as well. Next up is to put the final highlight now onto this dark leather. As you can see there, it's got quite a bright highlight going all the way around it. So I go back to the bone white, and uh, the best that I can, my edge highlighting skills aren't brilliant. The best that I can, I go around all of these areas again, putting a real fine edge to that uh, previous beastie brown that we've just highlighted on there. And I also try and create a few little scratches as well, <laughs> without making them look too blobby. And now that we've finished painting the braces, we can go back into the lead belcher and use that to go and pick out all the studs. Making sure as before we're nice and careful and we don't get that lead belcher onto our braces because this will be a nightmare to repaint. Whilst we've got the lead belcher out, the next thing we're going to do is start building up the highlights that are on the axe. So looking at the illustration that I'm following, there's sort of three layers to it. It starts off with a very black steel, then that goes into a very worn looking medium metal, followed then by an edge highlight of a very shiny metal right on the blade itself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use lead belcher. We're also going to use that colour to base out. You can see there there's a stud next to the belt buckle as well as the medallion he's got hanging around his neck. To highlight those, we're then going to go into Rune Fang Steel, using the same motion that we did before, we're just going to gently flick this, but over a smaller area now, just catching the very edge of that blade. Sticking with the Rune Fang Steel, we're now going to use this to edge highlight all around the axe as well. Edge highlighting complete, and that's made a great difference to how the axes look. The last thing that we need to do now that we've got the Rune Fang Steel now is to go back over all of the studs just for the last time and put a final highlight over just the very tip of all of them. Next we're moving on to Balthazar Gold, we're going to use this now to block out the nice big belt buckle that he's got in the middle of him. Now I also realised I forgot to paint the horn armour at the end so I went back and put a layer of lead belcher on that as well. 
Okay, there's not much more to do now. Next up, we're going to be painting the wraps that are on the handles of the axe. Starting off, I'm going to base coat these in white. Painting white over black is always difficult, so make sure you thin your paints down and apply several layers to make sure you get that nice even coverage and build up. Whilst I was working with white, I then moved on and started to do the teeth on the Beast Lord. First thing that I did was just gently touch each tooth just to make sure I knew where it was. I then came back in and as carefully as I could, just built up over that mark until the entire tooth was fully painted. There we have it, that is both the wraps and the teeth all painted. The wood on the handle was looking a little bit plain, so I wanted to try and add a grain effect into it. Now is the time to do that. We're going to be applying a wash to the wrap. So what I don't want to do is have necessarily the wash done, then I do the grain, then I want to wash it again. At this stage, any part of the wash that might spill over from the wrap in the next phase, that's just going to help blend it in with the rest of the wood and make it look realistic. Now that the grain is painted in, we're going back to the sepia shade, putting a little bit more on the wet palette. We're now going to be going all over the wrap that we just painted white with the sepia shade, making sure to get a good coverage and to push it into the recesses to get that real depth into all the crevices that are on there. That's dried, so the next stage is to start building up the highlight on these. I start off by going into a bone white, thinning that down and applying a thin coat, building it up each layer. The wash that we put on really helps separate where the highlights and the lowlights are. So on all the highlights, I'm just building up a fine layer of the bone white. And then what I'm going to do is once this is all finished, come back and highlight that again with a brighter white as well. And for that highlight, what I'm going to do is mix some white in with the bone white. And then going to carefully go inside all of the highlights that I made in the previous stage making sure just to catch the very center of them that's going to help create the full tone of dark to light on these wraps. After five to ten minutes carefully going inside all of my previous highlights that was complete. Back to Nuln Oil for the moment. Like an absolute idiot, I didn't apply a shade of Nuln Oil over the Balthazar Bronze and the previous Lead Belcher shade that we did on the medallions and the belt buckle. So I quickly went back, just applied that shade, and that's enabled me now just to move on to the next stage, which is going to be highlighting it. So while that Nuln Oil does dry, we're going to move on and repaint the hooves. Uh, I did paint these previously, I really wasn't happy with it, so I've cut the footage out. What I'm going to do is just repaint these and we're going to do it first as last. I was much more happy with how this second attempt turned out, so I'd rather show you this and have you follow along. So starting off with Beastie Brown, we put a base colour on the hooves. From there, I then went into the Nuln Oil, made sure to give those a nice heavy application, getting as much shadows into it as I could. I went back into the leather brown and I started to put streaks starting at the base of the hoof moving up into it just to try and create those nice sort of striation lines that you always see uh, heavy metal and everyone else paint. Once that was done I came back and repeated the process with bone white just putting a few less striations in and I was quite happy with how that turned out. Now that the Nuln Oil has dried on the belt buckle and all the other silver trims that we did earlier, I came back in with the Rune Fang Silver and just edge highlighted all around the skull, the edge of the belt buckle, as well as all the uh, the edges on the spikes on, the, on the, the surface of the medallion, just to help those have an extra shine and shimmer to them. I also applied it just to the top of the horn armour to help give that an extra little bit of shine as well. And there we have it, I think the painting is finished. The next thing we need to do now is base this model. And to do that, I'm going to put it back into the base that it came with, pushing this in properly this time. And we can start basing. We're going to use Army Painter Basing Glue. Put that on an old knackered brush that I've got. I've just spread it all over the base there, making sure to get a good even coverage. The next, we're going to go into the Forbidden Nutella. I got this off a friend of mine. It is a mix of static grass and uh, some kind of like dry sand. It's a, it's a good mix. So spreading that all over the base, this is going to give me a good sort of fantasy woodland vibe. So after sprinkling it all over the PVA glue and tapping it off, that was looking good. Time to leave it to dry. Once dry, I grabbed my gamer's grass, found one that looked about right, and I set it at the back of the model. I didn't want to detract too much from all the work that we've done on the tabard on the front. But most importantly, I didn't want to detract from this. As you all know, models of this era, goblin green, it has to be for the rim of the base. 
So thinning that down and just put two thin coats all around the rim of it just to make sure this model is truly period correct. And there we have it, this is done. Please let me know how close you thought that I got to the real uh, version that I was trying to follow along with. I really enjoyed doing this. Um, I'm doing this series to try and test my painting skills. As I said, so it would be great for you to follow along with me as well as we're going to do the Lord of the Rings series. However, if you're here for the Warlord Titan, fear not because that is next episode. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.